Hey guys, Nick from Sharp Goat Photography. Here we go for round two of the Sharp Goat Photo Challenge. All of your submissions are in, and we're ready to take a look and get some feedback going for all these photos. I'm going to try and speed these videos up and try not to uh, ramble on too much. So without any further ado, here we go. First up, oh, to in the the challenge of course was for. Uh, the topic of household. So whereas the first challenge around it was architecture forcing you to get outside and take uh, a different glance at buildings around you. So uh, that one, that one kind of forced you out of your element a little bit, or I hope it did. This time around, it's a it's th this challenge also forced you out of, uh, to do something you don't normally do, just going around your house trying to find you know. Uh, seemingly ordinary objects and find a story find an image with those objects uh i've seen uh, i've read a, a number of articles where people uh people recounted stories where they do just that they take their camera and they run around they run around their house just for an afternoon just to see well all the different kinds of shots that they could possibly get it's fascinating because it forces you to look at things that you've seen a million times over but also are just normal everyday things they may be actually very simple to you but to someone else they could be you know they could be something unique but uh, it's forcing you to find a story find a different way to uh to capture your subject because one of the things as a photographer is you always or you know with me whenever i'm uh, i'm out to take a photo whether it be of a person or an object or uh, or you know a landscape or whatever um You've, you've always got to be constantly thinking, okay, this is how I've always shot it, or this is how you know, someone else has always shot it. How else can I shoot this? What else can I do? What, you know, how differently can I shoot this subject of mine? Uh, and that way you come up with different shots each and every time. So you got to be thinking of new, and, uh, you know, experiment new ideas. That's the idea. Try out different things. So with the challenge, I forced you, or I asked you rather, to uh, you know, once you've taken a, a photo of one particular, uh, one particular subject from one particular angle, here I go rambling again. Exactly what I told myself I wasn't going to do. Uh, I had asked people to uh, take different pictures at different angles because when you approach a subject, first shot that comes to your mind is the one that you've taken before, possibly a hundred times. The one that the most common one. So usually that's actually something I try to do whenever I'm I'm on a shoot, whether it be for a wedding or a portrait or. Uh, or whatever I you know when you see your model for the first time what's that one shot in your head that you know or you know it could be a number of shots that okay you know I, I could shoot it this way that way that way that's the standard thing that just comes to your mind it's automatic okay shoot that out of the way bat 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 okay because once you get once you get those out of the way all right you've done all those now you've got to get creative you got to keep switching it up you got to think of new ideas guys you know you got to think of okay I've, I've I've done it this way now let's come up with some new ways so that is, a, is what I hope this challenge did for you. Let's find out exactly uh, what you guys turned in. First, and I do re review these in order. Um, so first, we for, let me just take a sip of coffee here. All right, so first up we've got Kate B. Kate B, how's it going Kate? Thank you for submitting. Okay, so let's see what Kate, what's in Kate's house? Awesome. I like this very much. Let me shut my iPad off because honestly it's been silent this entire night but is now deciding to wake up. Let me just turn that right off because I need to give some good comments to this. I like this very much. I like the dominating color. I really like the dominating color in this. Um, in fact, this hint could be a challenge coming up in the future that I've got stocked, uh, stocked, uh, stockpiled in my head um uh, you know color but uh, uh i'll hold off on that for now um but this i really dig i like how you've got you've isolated the this first one here in the bottom um uh amongst all of these i actually kind of wonder what it would look like if this, if this whole thing was in sharp detail um it uh, you know i take that back no i like the way that you've done this this because otherwise it would just kind of disappear against the the you know the flat yellow wall this I like. It it tells a little bit of the story. This little uh, yellow bud down here in the you know in dead center is in is appears to be in sharp focus, um, whereas all of these in the background. I even like how it it kind of it kind of looks like it's opening up from left to right clockwise. Um, 
the buds are getting bigger and bigger. I hope that was on purpose because I really dig that very, very much. Very good. Awesome. You are shooting on a D70S. I never, I didn't actually find out, find that out last, last week. Um, it was 0.3, so I'm guessing you've got a tripod. Good for you. Uh, 244 mil F2. Awesome. Yeah, I love this. Great. Great job. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Okay. Not as much love for this. Um, and, uh, hmm. Okay. What comes to mind first is that I, I kind of see what you may have been going because the texture of the wood, the grain of the wood. Seriously, my phone has been silent this entire night. Oh, it must be because it's it's Oscars tonight. Everybody's watching and everybody's... I, I tweeted once about, about the visual effects protest and boom, everybody's... Just, Everybody's responding, so I think I I think I like what you were going for with the wood grain against the you know the the you know the flatness the plainness of the wall. Um, uh, honestly, I don't like that it's against the wall. I think that it should be uh, there needs to be some depth. Either that or the shadow needs to be stronger. I think that would have been awesome actually if there if the shadow was stronger behind it, just to give more layers more depth to it. Um, because otherwise, there's that not too much going on here. Um, it also seems like it's a bit too close. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much for it. Ah! <laughs> awesome. Okay, I love okay, I love shots of toys like this. This is great. See, this is, this is the kind of thing that makes it... This is really well composed. Okay, this is well composed. I like this. Actually, you know what? take a step back because uh, I don't know what else is going on around here but I like th this toy already it's got a face to it it's got energy to it so it, my eyes are dry drawn right to it so even you know take a step back and let uh, uh, let more of this uh, the, the shelving unit in and what uh, what's going on in these neighboring uh, unit uh, neighboring shelves because I think uh, yeah I think you could have afforded to take a few steps back but um, because I love yeah the just this the it's got a life to it, but it's a lifeless object. Um, yeah, I think that's very cool. I'm wondering if it had to be black and white. The black and white does make it stand out because I realize that it's you know a white face and the and have you know colors throughout, so that'll darken it up. So it does make it even pop even more. So actually, yeah, I think yeah you, you had the right idea when you went black and white. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Awesome. Um, wow. Okay. I like how you had this opportunity to, to, to if you had staged this. Uh, hmm. Do more with this. Do more with it. Because like I, you know, going back to this one here, what I what I wanted to see more of was you know pull back because uh, I see these objects on the left and right that are just that are just ordinary. They don't have a face. They don't have a life. There's no there's no uh, energy to them at all. But this this one has a personality. Um, this toy in the center has a personality, and so that I think made for a good subject, especially amidst all these other um, faceless objects. And then when you pull back, now you're in color, and you see a number of these other toys around it as well. Um, so either I would have gone one way, I would have staged a little bit more, where I would have uh, actually, um, I would have. And this is, again, this is just what I would have done. I'm not saying whether right, wrong, or anything like that. These are just comments that come to my mind. So, you know, feel free to disagree. Um, it, but uh, all these other drawers next to it, all these other cabinet units uh, around the, the smiley face phone, um, I would have either A, staged it with uh, some, you know, more ordinary boring objects to, to, uh, to show that there's this, this life in the middle of this ordinary blandness going on or I would have I see you've got a number of these other toys that also look like they had they could have some life to them um I would have uh, kind of staged one in each and I'm not sure if you've got the room but try this because if you uh, if you step back even more what were you shooting at here probably wide 32 mil if you'd gone uh if you'd be able to put a little bit of distance between you and you and the shelf here. The reason why uh, the reason why we're not able to see uh, there's the the wide lens distortion going on here. So at, you're at a wide angle, so you get, you're able to get closer and get more of the uh, shelf in. But because of that, 
um, we can see straight into the smiley face unit here, but these other ones, we have a slightly different perspective. It looks like th you're looking out. So it's you can't look at the whole unit flat, if that makes any sense at all. Um, what I would suggest, if you've got the room, because I think you've got a, a really awesome picture opportunity here, uh, take some distance back and zoom in to 50 or 85, um, however, however, for however further of a focal length you can get, uh, because then, then that way you could get uh, it'll look like you're looking more flat against the. Uh, sorry, let me take a second stab at describing this. If you step back and you zoom in, it changes the perspective of the photo, so it doesn't distort it. If you've noticed when you shoot at a wide angle lens, uh, it distorts the image so that, uh, let's say if you're shooting anything with a straight line right across with a wide angle um, moved right in, it will bow, it will, uh, the whole world will look like it's distorted. You see this really exaggerated with a fisheye lens. Uh, if you've ever seen a fisheye lens on a video camera or, or a picture, uh, uh, a picture uh, shot with a fisheye lens, it really distorts the crap out of it. So you can, it, it almost looks like you're seeing, you know, around you. It, uh, it uh, distorts the image that way. So when you zoom in, uh, your focal length, uh, when you get beyond 50 or to 85, it compresses the image. So if you compress it, then I, uh, I think it would make, f you've got a, uh, a better photo opportunity here, especially if you stage it where you have one of these little, uh, smiley, laughing, happy toys in each one, uh, or, you know, stage it appropriately like that. I don't know. Um, I'm kind of rambling. That's, uh, you know, if I had to pick between the two, um, going back, I definitely dig the black and white one. I think you had the right idea there. And again, because it's a smiling face, it's got a, it's a life amidst, uh, this, uh, this, this space around here. And it made me smile. Okay. Moving on. Uh, Okay, cool. Hey, I've got one of these, a mortar and pestle. Okay, what am I thinking? Um, hmm. Kind of not much else to this, but what I would suggest to make this better, first of all, I would, uh, uh what was, what were your settings at here? You're at F5, 68 mil, wow. You're still getting uh, it, almost almost to the point of a macro shot. Okay, um, I okay. Here's what I would have done. This it it just looks like there's not a whole lot more to it. You need more light into the bowl if the subject is the uh, are the subjects are the peppercorns themselves. Then you need more light in the bowl here. So I would have stopped up uh, the exposure or you know. Uh, at least try to bounce some more light into it. it looks like you're working with daylight. Um, you can even afford to take it back. We're too close, so I would have uh, taken it taken it back a little bit more. Uh, maybe filled the bowl a little bit, uh, a little bit more than that. Um, yeah, it just it it looks like we're too close. It doesn't look like there's enough there. It's not all there. So I would have taken a step back. Again, just what I would have done. I would have taken a step back, um, and uh, also maybe uh, if this. Sorry, I'm pointing at the screen. I know you can't see that. The uh, what? What part of that? I know it's called a mortal and pestle, but what's the the rod here called? The smasher Dewey. The this smasher Dewey. If you want the eye, our eye, to follow it into the bowl, so you want the human eye to follow it into the bowl, then try to uh, change your composition so that it's running either bottom right in, top right in, so less right across, but if it's just bringing us more in towards center, so right, so from upper right corner in here, left, uh, left bottom corner into here, you see what I mean? Then the human eye will follow it into the bowl to our subject. You'll guide the human eye. Um, okay, and that's it for Kate. Kate, thank you very much for submitting your two weeks in a row. Keep it up. I look forward to seeing what you submit next week.